Please note that the scope of these videos is only to present the meanings and significance of Shri Rudram. Teaching the actual chant of Shri Rudram takes a much more dedicated environment and strict rules which need to be followed, especially if one is using it as a daily chant. If you are interested in learning it as a daily chant, I will include a list of Vedic teachers across Bharat in the description below. I cannot personally vouch for all of them, but still, it is a much better alternative to learning it on your own from online videos. Now that I have set that context right, let us get started with the exploration of the meanings of Shri Rudram. In our previous video, we understood what the word Rudra signifies, how Rudra is depicted both in a personified form and as a force of creation, the 11 different names of both the masculine and feminine manifestations of this explosive energy and the aspects of human creation that each of them correspond to. I also mentioned that these 11 manifestations are correlated with the 11 different segments or Anuvakas of Shri Rudram. But what I did not mention is that what is usually referred to as Shri Rudram is actually a combination of two chants called as Namakam and Chamakam, both of them containing 11 different segments of their own. Let us now look at why this twofold division exists, a brief overview of each of them and different combinations in which they are usually put to practice. Namakam, which gets its name because of the repeated usage of the word Namaha at the end of every line, contains 170 lines, each of which is a mantra of its own. The word Namaha indicates surrender and can be interpreted as a combination of two sounds, Na, which means not, and Ma, which means me. When we utter the word Namaha, we diminish our own limited identity and make way for a bigger aspect of creation being worshipped to descend upon us. It is therefore a word used to invoke any particular deity. Once the deity of worship is invoked, then comes the part of prayer where one asks for fulfilment of various kinds of desires and seeks the deity of worship to bestow various kinds of well-being. This second part, which is called as Chamakam, gets its name because of the repeated usage of the words Cha, Me at the end of every line which literally mean, also give that to me. The entire chamakam is a series of requests which goes, give that to me, and also give this to me, and also that, and also this, and so on. Chamakam is a relatively shorter work than namakam, but people count a total of 343 desires which are sought in all the 11 anuvakas of chamakam put together. These seemingly mundane requests also have deeper metaphorical interpretations which we'll get to at a later stage. For now, let us look at how these two components of Rudra Dhyayaha are chanted in practice. One recitation of the entire Namakam followed by the recitation of the entire Chamakam is called as Rupakam. Chanting the entire Namakam once followed by the first Anuvaka of Chamakam and then repeating this process 10 more times for each of the next 10 Anuvakas of Chamakam is called as Ekadasha Rudram. As you can see, the idea here is to maximize the intensity of invocation before we get to the part where we seek fulfillment. Doing this entire process 11 times is called as Laghurudram. Doing Laghurudram 11 times is called as Maharudram. And doing that 11 times is called as Atirudram. Here is a table which depicts how many times Namakam is chanted in each of these formats. The mantras of both Namakam and Chamakam are performed both as a collective chant or as a Homa by adding the word Svaha at the end of every mantra. You might have heard these terms in various events which are conducted during Mahashivaratri celebrations. Mahashivaratri is a night of immense spiritual progress. Please make sure that you make use of this opportunity by keeping your spine erect throughout the night. Here's a video where I talk about what Kundalini is and why it is important to keep the spine erect on Mahashivaratri. In our four-stepped approach towards Sanskrit learning, the first step called as Vak Shuddhi is now being offered as a three-week course on Google Classroom. This ultimate first step into the world of Sanskrit requires absolutely no prior background and offers deep spiritual insights in the form of short stories right from the very first step of reading and writing the Sanskrit alphabet. If you are interested in attending this course, please register using this link. 
share it with your friends and family who might be interested in exploring these fields. Please make sure that you click on the like button and if you have not subscribed yet, consider clicking on the subscribe button and enabling notifications so that you are immediately informed of all of our future updates. See you in the next video. Namaskaram.